Hello and thanks for watching. Uh, first things first, please forgive me, I have a really bad cold at the moment, so please forgive the, the coughing and snipping. I'll try to edit some of it out. Um, you, uh, you'll be forgiven for thinking that the following story is a fiction. That in uh, 2022, a, a well-known utility company that made £1 billion in the first half of 2022 would be so immoral and incompetent that through inaction they'd have the full backing of Ofgem and the Ombudsman and that regardless of their actions they'd get away scot-free even after committing appalling crimes against their customers. But before we get into that there's a, li a little bit about me and my family. I'm Lee uh, I live in Colchester in Essex. I'm 56, married to amazing to my amazing and totally beautiful wife Amanda. We've been a couple for 32 years, and we have two children, Lily and Fionn. Um, in 2018, I was diagnosed with early onset dementia, and at that time, I was an HGV driver, and obviously, I had to give up my driving license. So. I obviously lost my job and uh, I've tried getting other work but no one you know will take me on and also my daughter um, Fionn is epileptic <clears throat> uh, just for fun I'm training to become an Iron Man uh, and if you're wondering how a man with dementia can record a video like this uh, it's actually my memory that's mainly affected um, and the details that you'll soon hear are our story, mine and Amanda's, which we told our daughter and who created a script, basically, for me to repeat. And that's what I'm doing now. I'm actually reading from, like, a Word document behind the camera. Well, there's, like, prompts, you know. And so... <clears throat> Under Scottish power and their crimes against humanity. But for but but before I start, I just wanted to say I'm not normally the type of person to make videos of this kind. I, it's just I've tried everything else. I wrote to my MP and was told there was nothing he could do. I tried complaining to Scottish power twice now, and uh, you know that didn't do anything. And I've been to the Ombudsman now twice. Um, and none of it's worked. So I'm hoping to get your help. And uh, more on this uh, towards the end of the, of, the, of the recording. And so on to the story. According to my wife, in 2019, we think, I was at Asda doing a little shopping when a man in the foyer asked if I'd consider swapping energy companies. I said yes, but as I had dementia, I couldn't decide on matters like that because I'm not cognitively competent. And in response, he said, not to worry, I could sign on my wife's behalf and no one would know, which, according to everyone, I, I, I did that. Um, but I'll, I'll, there'll be more, um, I'll give more information on that uh, later on in, in the video, towards the end, because that, that, that's when that we put that into the Ombudsman on our second complaint. So um, I'll, I'm trying to do this in order. <clears throat> um, after being with Scottish Power for a little while, and for reasons we can't recall now, we got into some difficult difficulties with payment and owed like £300 and contacted customer services, you know, explained the, um, the problems and that, and they said that was fine. And we made an agreement to repay the debt over a 12-month period. Um, now, call us stupid or incompetent to a degree, um, but, you know, give us, cut us a little bit of slack, you know, we we're quite affected by disability in the house, you know, sometimes other things are more important. 
but uh, we never checked that, that this bill was being paid, not until three months later when we were contacted by Scottish Power. <coughs> uh, apparently, for reasons unknown, at the beginning, our, our direct debit was cancelled by Scottish Power. Uh, the excuse, that, or the, what, what they told us was, that normal customer services don't have the power to set up arrangements, and the, and the department that does have that decided that the amount agreed wasn't enough and cancelled the direct debit. Uh, problem is, that £300 debt was now £600 debt. We made another agreement, which was obviously increased, to an amount we could just about afford only this time, Amanda watched the account, and sure enough, after a single payment, it was cancelled again by Scottish Power. This situation continued twice more, at which point we owed more than £1,000. Uh, we made an official complaint uh, following Scottish Power, Power's procedure, which was completely ignored, and so, uh, we wrote to Keith Anderson, the CEO, who uh, put us in touch with a lady for, whose name we can't remember now, but I think she worked in the CEO's department or, you know, she was an assistant or something. Uh, <coughs> uh, so, so we made an agreement, and you never guess what. Even though it was like from the top, yeah, they cancelled the direct debit again. Uh, you know, my mind is just like flabbergasted by this company. They just don't seem to be able to communicate between each other. You know, if you know, to my mind, if to see if like uh, the CEO's um, assistant has set up an agreement, that should stick. But no, not with Scottish Power. You know, there's this other department who seems to have like all the power to do whatever they want. Anyway, at this point, uh, we complained to the Ombudsman, thinking uh, we'd have more luck with them. And after about four months, in which most of what we had to say was, was completely ignored, Scottish Power made an, an offer to, uh, uh, sorry, made an offer to make an apology and provide us with seventy-five pound as a goodwill gesture. Uh, not compensation, they don't call it that, it's a good a goodwill gesture. Obviously, uh, at this point, we were actually £1,200 in debt because of Scottish Power's incompetence. We decided um, to reject this offer because obviously the Ombudsman would, would, would see that our debt was due to Scottish Power's incompetence and wipe the debt clean. Well, you'd think, wouldn't you? But no. Scottish, the Ombudsman sided with Scottish Power and upheld the decision. So basically, we received an apology, £75 in compensation, um, for, you know, we were now 1,200 quid in debt because they, they wouldn't like, they kept cancelling our direct, direct debits and all we got was 75 quid. So we still had like, what was it, £1,125 in debt because of them. That was the first Ombudsman's complaint. And so um, <clears throat> we made an agreement that was affordable, barely, but meant we had to make some pretty d drastic changes to the household. We cut back on luxuries like cakes and sweets for the kids. Uh, and we could no longer... The, the, the thing that upset us the most, I know it's probably silly, but we could no longer afford to give our youngest daughter a £5 pocket money. Uh, the amount at that time we agreed was usage, which was Scottish Power said was £360, plus £60 from the debt, which at this point... <clears throat> uh, I can't remember how it worked out, but 
we were actually, at this point, we were earning £3,000 worth of debt. And uh, for two months, all was good and rosy. The debt was slowly being reduced, only on the third month, we noticed that instead of the 420 amount being taken, they took 480 pound. It just went up, just like that. Now Amanda remembers saying to me, not to worry, it was probably a mistake and wouldn't happen again, only it did. It happened twice more, which as you can imagine, for a family on the breadline meant that it was crippling us financially. You know, at this point, we were, well, we were eating the, well, next to nothing. Uh, Amanda called the bank and uh, we, she was told to cancel the direct debit and uh, but obviously we decided to continue paying but we were using Scottish Power's online system only what we decided to do at that point was we were going to take meet, weekly meter readings and submit those and then pay for the actual usage plus £60 from the debt and that's what we've done since when was it? September when we've made the first like the last um agreement. Uh, and to our complete surprise, even this winter, our usage was nowhere near what Scottish Power was saying it was. So not three hundred and sixty plus sixty, but actually two hundred and eighty. We were paying way more than we were using. Uh, the good news is that paying that amount lessened our debt to 2,400, but it meant we'd had to take out loans and we'd borrowed money from family and uh, the odd like 20 pound from close friends just to make ends, ends meet. I mean, we're proud people. We've been like looking after ourselves for, for years not having to rely on any, everyone else. And just down to Scottish Power, we had to start like accruing not only debt in that, but debt in everything, you know. Um, so for the next, so for the next six months, we happily paid for actual usage plus 60 pound until right out of the blue, we started getting threatening emails and phone calls from Scottish Power. This was at literally a daily event where they hounded us two or three times every day and the phone just wouldn't stop ringing. You know, they'll try like different numbers, but you know, we, well, I, I couldn't like think of what to do. But anyway, Amanda, she decided to call customer services, but on, on each occasion she was told she had to pay the amount Scottish Power w wanted. There wasn't like any oh, you can't afford this, so, you know, well, maybe you can pay this. No, there was no flexibility in them, in them at all. They said we either had to pay the amount they said or they'd fit a prepayment meter. And the amount they wanted us to pay was way more than usage. The amount was actually 400, it went up now, it went up to 460 pounds plus the 60 pounds from the debt, so it was 520. Even though our usage was only 360, so, you know, well, they're getting like 260 pound more. Uh, but then there's no way we could afford that. Uh, 560 pound is actually double our usage. Uh, having no other option, Amanda made another official complaint and for three weeks, we heard nothing. Which, to be honest, even though they're completely incompetent, they always got back to us eventually. We never had to wait like three weeks. And so she phoned, you know, customer t uh, customer services, and, they, and the lady said, oh, we've changed the complaints procedure. We don't accept them on, uh, on e email uh, complaints anymore. You have to submit a complaint through a special a new special chat facility that they have on their website. So, she tried using this three times. Once it was completely unavailable, which we thought was probably because they had so many complaints. Uh, the second time, she was cut off half, halfway through the complaint and 
surprise, surprise, when we got back, they, they hadn't kept a lot of record of it, which is probably why they do it that way anyway, because when you email a complaint, you've got proof. When you do it through the online way, there's no, you know, you haven't got any proof. So, you know, they can just say, what? They never made a complaint. And uh, when she finally went through the system, it was just completely rejected. You know, we didn't have a, we didn't have a, uh, a complaint, so we couldn't do anything. Now, remember, at this point, we are actually still paying for usage and money from the debt, so the bill is being paid. Yeah, so it's not like there's any more debt accruing or nothing. It's coming down. Um. And as if by co complete coincidence, the day after being told she didn't have a complaint by Scottish Power, I was downstairs. I don't remember this, but you know, Amanda and the girls tell me. Uh, Amanda was in bed at the time, because she wasn't feeling well. Well, she was really unwell actually. She had like a flu or something. And there was a knock at the front door. And when I answered, I found it was a debt collector. Apparently, They've been like, you know, trying to get in touch with us for ages and this was the last resort, you know, having to come round and, you know, according to this bloke, if, if we didn't agree to pay the amount Scottish Power wanted us to pay, remember they wanted us to pay double, yeah, our usage plus 60 quid, that they'd apply for a warrant to fit a prepayment meter. And so, Fortunately, we've got like a really bright daughter. Well, both of them are really bright, you know, but our youngest. She did a little set about researching Scottish power and just by luck, she found that, you know, uh, about this time, Ofgem had submitted them with a provisional order claiming that they'd broken several of the standard licensing conditions, mainly 27.8 A. DI, which stipulates that the license holder must set repayment rates based on ability to pay, which includes ensuring all available information is taken, is obtained and taken into account. Which to us meant they should have taken note of the income and expenditure form we obtained from the national debt line. So essentially, meaning they'd broken the law by not actually going into um, taking our our income into consideration. They knew that all we actually had left over was sixty quid a week, you know, to pay off the debt and. Uh, whatever that amount was then, I think it was 280. Yeah, the original. So this then formed a part of our second complaint to the Ombudsman that Scottish Power was in breach of 278ADI. And to cut a long story a little shorter, and as you'll probably already be thinking to yourself, yeah, I know what's going on, here, what's going to happen now. Despite all of this, the Ombudsman didn't. St fine for us again. Uh, now the quote from the Ombudsman, and I'm paraphrasing, they're not there apparently to, discard, dis, to, for dis, to decide for or against anyone. And they would only intervene if, if, if it was proven that the license, license holder had broken the law. And even after reminding her that they'd breached 27 ADI, that was completely ignored. And again, Scottish Power only had to pay a goodwill gesture of £75 and provide an apology. Uh, the second part of the complaint, if you remember, uh, the, right at the beginning when I said um, how the guy had like, conned me into signing on Mailer's behalf, it's actually fraud, uh, what he did was he persuaded a disabled person that to sign a contract on behalf of someone else. Again, the Ombudsman sided with Scottish Power saying too much time had passed. Now this is actually the state of our country right now. Not just for me, for 
thousands of families. Everywhere you go, you hear stories about, like, you know, oh, you know, they're fitting like meters and, you know, take, ignoring people. But Scottish Power are, you know, are, in my opinion, the worst company that's ever existed. Uh, they call them Scottish Power, but they're not actually Scottish, they're actually Spanish. Uh, they were taken over by some company, I can't remember their name now. Uh, but yeah, that's the state of this company now, where companies like Scottish Power aren't a hel held to account at all. And there are many, many stories on social media concerning this company. Uh, well, actually, I saw a video the other day, uh, with, like some blokes in masks or whatever, threw red light paint all over their um, over their head office win uh, front glass windows and put put uh, blood on your hands, you know, in red paint. That's where I got the title for this video. I thought that was awesome because it is. Uh, so yeah, that's the state of this company where companies like Scottish Power aren't held to account. There are many, many stories on social media concerning this company, and by far the worst that I've read was about a single parent family where a prepayment meter had been fitted, and at every time this lady added credit, it was all taken, leaving her and her children with no electricity for weeks. She even got a loan for like 500 pound, put that in, and that was all taken, the whole lot. And as a last resort, she basically had to give up, you know, living on her own or whatever, with her children in a flat, she had to move back with her family. Well, that's terrible. <coughs> now, oh no, now this is my idea, yeah. Um, I actually think it's quite a good idea, but you know, I'll let it, we'll see how it goes. I know there's groups out there like Don't Pay, and they've, they've done some amazing work. In fact, I signed up for me, well, we signed up for it ourselves. But for well, whatever reason, that's not helping. I'm not saying that wasn't a good idea, because it was, but it hasn't worked. So my idea is to clog up the complaint system and that everyone that's having complaints or has had complaints, um, you know, against Scottish Power and have got nowhere, make a complaint today, yeah, everyone. And when you finish with that, make an appeal. And when that's complete, complain to the Ombudsman. And then when the Ombudsman started, started with Scottish Power again, go back to Scottish Power and make another complaint and another appeal, and then go back to the Ombudsman. If we can get one million complaints into the system, they'd be so impeded they wouldn't be able to act, act neg negatively against any customer. And the same would apply to the Ombudsman. They'd have to do something which at the moment they're not, they're failing everyone. Thanks for watching, happy Christmas to everyone and take care. Thanks for watching.